episode of ChemTips and in this episode I'll be covering grain mapping and other post editing tricks that you can use to enhance your painting after you've completed it. So for the purpose of this tutorial I created this quick painting using custom brushes which is something I'll cover later. This is a very quick time lapse of me creating that painting. So once it's complete this is when the editing starts. And all you simply have to do is click this button here which is the button that creates adjustment layers. And you can do many things with this, such as adjust the colour, the hue, levels, curves, all the good stuff. So we're going to click on levels. And as you can see, there's a graph. And under the graph, there's three tiny arrows. And these can be moved around to change the white and black content and how prominent the whites and blacks are. And this is something that's great to experiment with. And after every completed painting, I often move these around just to see if anything can be improved. And sometimes your paintings can look like this, and they can lack a lot of value range. And this is why levels are so important to adjust, because just simply by changing the levels, you can really make the painting more eye-catching and stand out. So do make sure to adjust these levels, even if you feel the painting is perfect or exactly how you wanted it. It's always good to just see what other possibilities you can get. And as you can see, you can toggle it on and off to see if you like what you've uh, created. So that's enough for levels. Now we're going to go into blurring and gradient mapping. So first of all, blurring. To make everything easier, what I've learned is you can create a new layer, then hold Alt, Control and Shift, then press the E key. This merges the whole image into one layer, which makes it easier to edit. Now just for safety, I'm going to do this again. And once that's done, I'm going to choose the top layer and then go to Filter and Blur and Gaussian Blur. For this image, I'll select around 3.2. And now we have a top layer image that's blurred and the layer underneath which is unblurred. This is where we can have some fun with things. So if we go to brush presets and bring up the brush and we use the eraser to erase the top layer, we can reveal the focus of the image. This creates some sort of makeshift camera trick. So you want to make sure that whatever you want to focus on should be erased from the top layer. You can do the exact same thing with different types of blurs or effects. So this time I'm going to use radial blur. And this is really great for creating action scenes or fight scenes or any type of dynamic. Doesn't really suit this painting particularly, but I'll show you anyway. So you select radial blur and then you want to drag this blur center to where the character is or where the action point is. Then you want to reduce the blur amount to around 15. If you did the Alt Control Shift technique on the new layer, then you can erase that layer and reveal what's underneath again, this time giving the painting an obvious focal point. So lastly, create a new layer and then press Alt Control Shift and E again. This prepares us for gradient mapping which can be brought up by going to Windows at the top and going to Adjustments. This brings up a menu where you click the bottom right button. This creates a gradient map. And what gradient map does is it helps you map every color in the painting to be a different color. So you can even turn the black and white painting to be a colored painting. So you want to click inside the gradient and then choose colors through this button here. You can also add more tones by clicking in between the sliders. Now I'm just going to mess around with the colours and the main thing you want to go for here is basically the lights on the right. You want to choose a very light colour, maybe highly saturated as well, going down into the left which is darker. You can even have a sort of warm cool contrast in the shadows by choosing purple-ish black for the shadows. And once again it really pays off to be experimental so you want to try new things, add as many sliders as you want and just try different colours, try get pink in there, just have a bit of fun with it really. And last but not least we're going to go into the hue and saturation sliders. So just like before we're going to click the same button for adjustment layers and this time choose hue and saturation. Here we can see the slider at the top can be dragged across to instantly change the colours. This is really helpful for changing the mood and the motion of the painting. Maybe you prefer a bluer mood to the more sunny mood. Anyway, that's all I can squeeze in this episode and I'll see you next week.